Uh, hard to believe, by the way. We've already said goodbye to September. Gone. Out. First month of the season is in the books. And when you look at the month that was as we turn the page to October, there's so many surprises you could break down uh, with the first month of the season. First one to me, as I look big picture at what we're going to be going into October with part one, Clemson, six national champ or wow, six college football playoff appearances. Can you imagine if they had six national championships? Six playoff appearances, two national championships out of the college football playoff discussion in the month of September, gone. I don't think many of us had that uh, going into the season. Bit of a surprise at Clemson already out of the college football playoff picture. Same with LSU. I had LSU in the playoff. I had LSU winning the SEC. I had LSU winning the SEC West. And already, before we turn the page to October, two losses with still maybe the most talented team in the SEC West. They lose to Florida State week one, and then in a shootout, Yesterday with Ole Miss, they go down at the end, and because of it, they're out of the college football playoff picture, which to me is stunning um, with both of those teams out because LSU and Clemson both had those kind of aspirations, and here we are October 1st, and LSU's already stubbed their toe twice, same as Clemson. So both of them out of the college football playoff picture, a bit surprising to me uh, that that development. Another surprise that I have and this is before the new AP poll is out. So that's full disclosure. The new AP poll has not been released. But when I look at one, Georgia, and I go down to 18, Miami, there are a lot of schools and teams that are in this mix to bank the college football playoff. And I can't remember the last time that we've seen so many teams after the first month realistically having a shot at making the college football playoff. Now we get this from time to time where there'll be some parody and maybe one through 10 looks great or, or one through 12 looks great. But when you look at everyone that's in the mix, I mean, coming to the day, I think Alabama was ranked 12. They beat Mississippi state. And with LSU going down, you could argue Alabama is now again, the team to beat in the sec West. But that's just an example. If you look down at the teens, Oklahoma's hanging out there. They've got Texas and a big one this weekend. And so for me, surprise number two is that one through 18, we're all in play. Everybody's in play for a college football playoff berth. It's all going to settle itself out. The ACC, they've got five teams ranked. I mentioned Miami, Florida State's in there. North Carolina's in play. I mean, it's going to be a really, really good month of October when you look at who's still unbeaten, who's still in play. I don't think there's going to be many undefeated teams when this thing's all said and done. When you look at what's left to play in the schedule, Texas and Oklahoma, that's going to settle itself. Some of the ACC games are going to settle itself. Washington, who barely escaped Arizona late last night, they've got Oregon in a week or so. That's going to settle itself. And so when you look at the records, come the end of October when we fast forward a month, I'm not sure how many unbeaten teams are going to be. And that's going to be something to watch as we look at maybe the top one through 18 teams in the country. Big surprise to me that there are that many teams already still in play uh, for a college football playoff berth. Another thing as we recap the month of September, who'd have thought that one of the most dominant corridors of the country in college football would be the Pacific Northwest all the way to hell tucked out to the upper left-hand quarter of the country. When you look at Oregon State, who handed Utah its first loss, when you look at Oregon, still undefeated, Washington, still undefeated, and Washington State, undefeated. Think about that for a minute. Washington State and Oregon State left for dead in the Tupac, in the Tupac, in the Pac-2, in the defunct Pac-12. They're playing as good a football as anybody. Oregon State had its one loss of the season. Washington State has played really good football. And Oregon State went up and watched and lost in the Palouse. That's their one loss. There's no shame in that. And then you've got Oregon and Washington, who are among the best teams in the country. I know we focus Southeast, Texas, Oklahoma, gets a lot of conversation, Florida, state of Florida. But go look up in the Pacific Northwest, and that is some really, really good football. And per capita, you could probably argue that those four teams, 
in that area are as good as anyone in the country when you look at how small it is up there. I mean, what are they doing in the Pacific Northwest? Vineyards, hanging out, nature walks. No, they're playing football. And that's going to be something to watch as the season goes on because my biggest worry for the Pac-12, and we were talking about this throughout the weekend, my biggest worry for the Pac-12 when you look at the depth, top to bottom, is that it's going to be doggy dog and they're going to eat each other up. And how that handles itself throughout the season in terms of playoff positioning, in terms of uh, conference positioning, Pac-12 doesn't have any divisions. And so when you look at the rankings, as I pull them up right now, Washington, seven, USC, eight, Oregon, nine, Utah, their first loss, so they'll get kicked out of the top 10. They'll still be ranked. Washington State, 4-0, they're at 16. Oregon State, 19, 3-1. A lot of good football up in that corridor of the country. I just hope the Pac-12, who's had a remarkable start to the season, a remarkable first month of the season, I just hope they can have a team separate itself from the Pac because in the final year of this league, would love to see someone get into the college football playoff, but I'm here to tell you right now, USC, with the defense they showed against Colorado on Saturday, they had that thing done, dead, game over. I think it was 34-7 to at the half, something around there. 34-7, 34-14, doesn't matter. Either way, they put their foot on Colorado's throat in the first half, and to give Colorado credit, they didn't quit. And Dion said as much in his post-game press conference that these guys are resilient, they didn't quit, and they could have. I mean, this game was absolutely one-sided. And if USC trots that defense out the rest of the way, they've got no chance. They have no chance against Washington. They have no chance against Oregon. They've got no chance against Washington State. And so as this picture starts to crystallize a little bit out west with my friends in the Pacific Northwest, it's going to be fun. And I hope that at least one team finds a way to avoid the speed bumps like Utah didn't on Friday as we embark on the second month of the season. A couple of other storylines to get to. Kentucky and Georgia coming up. Kentucky just out physical Florida for four quarters. And here's how rare what happened on Saturday was for Kentucky. They've now beaten Florida three consecutive years. Let that sink in for a minute. This isn't college basketball. This is Kentucky football. They've beaten Florida now three consecutive years for the first time since 19. 19- 1951 is the first last time that that happened. Mark Stoops has that thing going. And people are like, well, they haven't really played anybody. Well, they don't have really quarterback that. We'll find out this week against Georgia, who I maintain lives a little too dangerously close to the sun. They won yesterday at Auburn 27-20. Uh, Georgia, they've won 22 consecutive games. Galloway and I got in an argument about whether they're the number one team in the country. I mean, by ranking, yeah. No one's dethroned them in 22 games. So I guess if you look at it by that metric, he's right. Give me something. I- 